Can you tell what day it is by what I'm wearing, huh? Do I sleep in my clothes? Maybe. Better than sleeping without clothes. Anyhow, I just realized I don't have my rings on. She got rings on her fingers and bells on her toes. Sweet Gypsy Rose. So how goes it, peeps? How goes it? Huh? Oh, there we go. I <laughs> feel like I'm a little bit bloaty. Um, what do I get going on here? Carla Jane, nice to see you. Nice to see you. I was just raving about you and all the progress you're making to my husband. Of course, not giving away any any um, trade secrets, but man, you are on a roll. Good for you. Ocean Nana. Oh, this is perfect. So Carla Jane, meet Ocean Nana. Na Ocean Nana, meet Carla Jane. Because you two have a connection. You're both now my clients. Ocean Anna, Louise starts on Monday. And Carla Jane, your generous generous, generous spirit um, is helping um, Carla. So, or, or excuse me, Louise, you know, look at me. I'm being like the hostess. There we go. I love it. Carla is saying the last of the 90 years of paperwork gone this morning. <gasps> How good must that feel? Rock on, rock on, people. Um, so good, Carla. You are you are an inspiration. You're an inspiration to me because I can totally see with just a little bit of encouragement and structure and problem solving, coaching, basically, that you are literally. Well, I was gonna say you're literally on fire. That would be kind of creepy, but you just did fire. But you guys, Carla is rocking the free world. Okay, I live it. I live it. I love it. Okay. And Louise, we're going to start our own journey on Monday too. So excited. Very cool. So Laura Given Voorhees. Hey friend. It says, I brought the bin of labeled stuff to the gem shop yesterday. Again, we're giving away the Liz Lemon high fives all over the place. High five. Very cool. Very cool. Yay. Good stuff happens here at DestinationDeclutter.com here on TikTok. Uh, my name is Beth. I am Destination Declu I am Destination Decluttered. It was funny. I um I called up my one of my credit card companies today because I wanted to finagle a um a retention offer. Something I learned about on TikTok. Let me help you with this. If you have an annual fee for your credit card, it can never hurt to ask them what they can do to keep you as a customer. Okay. So I did this today, and she's like, oh. Would you like any extra credit cards for your employees? I was like, me, I'm the problem. It's me. I'm the I am the, the boss. And actually, I was I was um, coaching with a client this morning. We talked about when you when you are an entrepreneur, when you're an independent contractor, you are not only the hair club for men guy. You're also a client. <laughs> you're also um, you're the boss and the and the um, the employee. So yes, good stuff, people. Good stuff all around. Um, what do we got going on today? Well, it's Thursday. And if it was in the early 80s, I'd be looking forward to seeing Mark and Mindy on TV tonight. But it's not the early 80s. Tonight, actually, I'm going out after my final coaching session. My friend Tom is a DJ. He's spinning some 80s tunes down at a brew pub near us. So my husband and I are going to walk down and see him. Um, but in the meantime, all of, I'm all about the clutter. <laughs> Carly says yesterday was Wednesday. Yes, it was all day. I had my head in the calendars like you wouldn't believe this morning. I will share with you time management, managing your time. I literally was like flipping this thing from now until Sunday, November 3rd. I was looking at gigs up until Christmas. And then after I did that, I said to my husband, like, what day is it today? Do we have anything going on? Like it takes you a while. So, yes, for context, everybody, I am on the East Coast of the United States. It's 1 o'clock in the afternoon, 1.05 p.m., East Coast representing. It is, I had to check my calendar right here. It is Thursday, October 17th, 2024. Um, yay. Oh, interesting. Uh, Cat Mama says, TikTok's been frozen all morning. So glad I got in. Maybe it was waiting for you to hang out with me. Okay, Nola Mish says, OMG, I need you right now with a bunch of exclamation points. I've got a room I need to tackle and your live is just what I need. I give you just what you needed, just what I needed. Look at me, I'm like Rick Ocasek or something. Somebody, I was just talking to somebody about Rick Ocasek. Oh, it was one of my clients who sells vintage stuff, very funny. Lita, 
Good morning from San Diego, California. San Diego is a place I, to I totally want to visit. I was thinking about that recently. My husband and I are looking for someplace warm to go. It's just a little, you know, two or three day jaunt. Um, this is one of the reasons I do some of these TikTok lives at what I call a later time than I'm used to. It's all relative. Um, I am on the East Coast, so it's one o'clock in the afternoon. If I do my math right, I'm thinking it's about 10 o'clock in the morning on the West Coast. So I like to show up for my West Coast people, my West Coast friendly type thing. So I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I'll be there for you, said the Friends theme song. Um, I am here for you now. How can I help you? This is me. I used to work retail. Seriously, how can I help? What are you struggling with? Clutter? Yeah, clutter. That's why we're here. Kara, nice to see you. Friend, so sorry you're going through the stuff. The Louis, but yeah, that's, that's, my heart is with you. My heart is with you. Um, and so is my wacky sense of humor and my love of mid-century modern objects. And I can distract you from the heaviness like nobody's business, but I can also help you get stuff done. I will share this with you guys. I myself am really doing some good decluttering. Some little, you know, we don't need this. Even my husband said, this was great, you guys. Any of you who are related to people who seem a bit reticent on the, on the decluttering, we had some little kind of small mugs, this little pair of mugs that my husband's mom had. Um, and when we were decluttering their house, he's like, no, I want to save those. And I was like, okay, whatever. Um, he recently has, because it's getting cold out here, he recently has been drinking like this really strong, like a mocha pot coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker, even though I love coffee ice cream, go figure. And I said, hey, why don't you use those little mugs that you that were your mom's? If we're going to have them, because this is my thing, and hopefully this is you too. If you're going to keep something, use it. Don't just put it away in a box. Use it, sh display it, do something with it. So he said, okay, yeah, I've been using these little, actually, Kara, you'll get a kick out of this one. Um, he previously had been using these very heavy um, restaurant china cups from Dunkin' Donuts, back when it was Dunkin' Donuts. Um, I'll, I'll show a picture of them maybe at some point. Um, and somebody I knew from college stole them from Dunkin's back in the day. You know, he'd go, he'd abscond with some when they were sitting at the thing. And then literally like two years ago, I get this random package in the mail saying, I know you collect vintage stuff here, have these. But um, long story short is my husband tried out the mugs that he saved from his mom's. He realized he did not like them. He, they did not work well. And now he feels better. It is easier now for him to let go of them. So they're in the little corner of the kitchen table. The next time I go down the basement, I'm going to put them in one of my donation bags. I offer this to you as a suggestion. If you are saving stuff to use it, use it this week. See if it works the way you want it to work. Now, I will share this with you too. Today's only Thursday, but another example from my life about using what you have. We had some friends over Monday night. It was so easy to open the door to them because not being cluttered means it's easy to clean your house. There was barely anything to clean anyway because we did a bit of that the other day. It was so less, so much less stressful. There was no stress at all knowing we had people coming over because we didn't have to worry about decluttering. When they came over, instead of using paper plates for appetizers, I pulled out the dessert plates from the china that I inherited from my mother who got it from my dad's grandmother. Now, I am mid-century and vintage like nobody's business. My grandmother's china is definitely old-timey. It's got little flowers on it and stuff like that. Luckily, it has enough little dots of color that go with my stuff that I don't mind it. We were just having crab dip and chips and I don't know, what, do we, what else do we have? Pickles? Some random stuff. But I didn't wait for a very important occasion to use the china. A very important occasion was that our friends were over. We also used, because I have some forks and knives, like some silver forks and knives that I got from my great aunt when she passed away. We used those dessert um, forks when we had pie that a friend bought. And it was just a pie. She got it like the, the grocery store. Use the things you have. Life is a special occasion. Use the good stuff. Okay, I just give you some of these, you know, 
you know, slices of my own life because I'm not just talking the talk, Johnny. I am not just talking the talk. I am walking the walk. Okay. Um, okay. So here, let me help you with that. So that's my little intro. Okay. Try to get some of this stuff out of the way. June is saying I'm going through storage stuff. Awesome. I just feel like throwing it all away because it gets overwhelming. Okay. I will be honest with you. I do not declutter shame. If you want to throw it all away, you go for it. I'm not going to judge you. However, what you may find is if you try to take that shortcut, not all the time, but sometimes what may happen is you may da 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 reclutter again. So if you want to throw it out, throw it out. At some point, everything, including our bodies, is going to go into a landfill somewhere. So it's either now or later. I prefer, I prefer to go through my stuff and pull out what might is no longer useful to me, but may be useful to somebody else. Because I grew up thrifting. I spent the first 40 plus years of my life practically furnishing my house from thrift stores and yard sales and stuff like that. So that's what I do. I encourage you to do it, but if you want, if you're getting overwhelmed, I get it. You want to, you want to decrease the overwhelm. I suggest taking, taking a break, work on your nervous system. How do you do that? You sit down. You slow down, you breathe down, you calm down, and then go through it a little bit at a time. Don't look at the whole storage unit. Look at it a little bit at a time. Chunk it down. Notice how I'm using that word down. Calm down, quiet down, chunk down, sit down, breathe down. When you feel overwhelmed, the opposite of over for me is down, so work on that, okay? Um, yeah, tired of the extra bill on junk. Yes, notice how decluttering here. I'm going to get, I get my little thing here. All, you know, the, the kind of the pie chart of your life, how your declutter, how your clutter affects your mood and your mental health. Right now, June, your clutter is affecting your pocketbook. Pocketbook. Did you hear me? God, I'm from Boston. Your pocketbook, your wallet, <laughs> your purse. <laughs> um, yeah, you're spending money to, ha to, to store stuff you don't, you may not even want, you know? Um, now, I love this. Laura says, that is such a goal for me. I love to cook for folks, but the mess isn't okay yet. Everybody, embrace the word yet. Notice the difference. Notice the difference between saying, I, the house isn't tidy enough to have folks over. Versus, the house isn't tidy enough to have folks over yet. Yet gives you that possibility. It's not there right now, but you can do it. Okay. There we go. Right. Okay. So here's the cool thing. Um, Louise Oceanana. So many of my pretties are packed away waiting for that perfect moment. Okay. A little jump start in our coaching together. Everybody. Perfection is unattainable. No. I want you to I want you to knock it back. I want you to chunk it down. Take one notch down from perfect. And I want you to be psyched about good, about better. Perfect is is going to just lead to disappointment. So when we don't even try, we don't even aim for it. Yep, yep. Don't worry. I, it's so funny. I can hear you already. What I want to offer, Louise. Seriously, all this stuff that's coming up. This is one of my coaching things. You're going to hear it right now. Notice I said, overwhelm, calm down, write down, quiet down. All this. I said, write down, right there, quiet down. And then I say, whatever comes up, because I know your thoughts kind of start here, but they also start here. Whatever comes up, write it down. Everybody here, you have the answers in you. I just help you discover them. And I actually help you just listen to yourself because I listen to you and I give you the opportunity for you to listen to you. And then I say, yes, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Oh, how funny is this, Kara? The universe is taking care of you. Also, I haven't paid attention to anything both yesterday and today. Here I am when I open TikTok. Yeah, I'm here for you. I am here for you because I don't know the the... the she moves in mysterious ways, you know? There we go. Hey, me. <laughs> it's a good day today. Thanks for your words. Yeah, I think you're welcome, Ellen. Yeah, there we go. Um, okay. Now, you said Patty Pumpkin says, anything's over three months of storage. Anything over three months of storage is a waste. My job for 17 years. Yeah, well, you know what? I will say this. Um, I paid for storage at one point in my life. I paid for storage because I had a job that required me to move here. I'll get all Massachusetts on you. I had my own awesome apartment in Medford because I worked in Cambridge. 
And you can tell I am, don't li live in Mass anymore because I said Medford and I actually put an R in there. Um, but I had to move to, I then I got, I was taken over the Pier 1 in um, North Dartmouth. North Dartmouth. God, I went from Mepha to North Dartmouth. And then I had to move to Northeastern. Northeastern, not Northeastern. And I needed to store the stuff. I did, at the place I moved into, I was, I was sharing a place with roommates. I only had, I needed a place for like my couch and everything. So sometimes you got to pay for storage, but notice the intentionality of my stuff. It was a short term thing, but it was stuff I had already made the conscious decision to keep. It wasn't just stuff that was pushed in there. Okay. So, hey, Robin, nice to see you. Um, June is asking any suggestions for pictures. Yes, sure. Only keep the good ones. Digitize them. And when I say digitize what you can, I seriously mean take a picture of a picture. Share those digital pictures all around. You know? Okay. User 5740. Oh, here. Look. See this? I got a tissue. Here, I'm going to hand it to you through the power of TikTok. Go get a tissue. Blot your eyes. Blow your nose. Nobody's there. Um, embarrassment. You guys, life is too short to be embarrassed. It really is. Embarrassment is just, it drains your, drains your energy. It just makes you feel crappy. Okay, how about this? Don't be embarrassed. Learn from what you did that didn't work out and let's do something different. Okay, I am here to try to save you time and save and make you feel better. So don't be embarrassed. Learn from your mistakes. And I use mistake because a mistake is not a mistake if you learn something from it, right? Okay. Okay, now this is interesting. You chick girl, I'm assuming University of Chicago, but that's just me. Mine is mostly my kids' stuff in storage there. Okay, you chick girl, how old are your kids? I'm just curious. You don't need to tell me, but you can if you want. You can put it in the things. I'm always curious about the things that we save for other people. Okay? You're saving stuff for other people. My kids' stuff is in storage there. Okay? Now, do I, I'm, I'm saving very little for my nieces and nephews. I will share that with you. I don't want to saddle them with stuff like we feel saddled with. Okay, early 20s. Okay, early 20s. We'll give them a pass as far as perhaps not living in a place where they can take their stuff. However, however, when you listen to me, you're going to understand the way I say it is decluttering. Sorry, I got distracted here. I'm trying to focus. Decluttering is a life skill. Early 20s is a perfect time to learn how to declutter because your kids are going to be pushing them out of the nest. They're going to be making their own nests. Decluttering is decision making. So you chick girl, what I would offer to you is even if your kids currently can't take what they want and put it where they live, get them involved with going through and decluttering to determine what, if anything, that you've saved for them that they actually want, okay? All of us are here because we didn't learn how to declutter well when we were growing up. Let's break that cycle. Let's break that cycle and you can teach, you chick girl, you could, you could teach this, you could learn it yourself. And while you are learning it from me or somebody else, I don't know, you can teach your kids, teach your children well, teach them this life skill of making a decision and feeling okay with keeping what's important and releasing what is not. You know, now I love this. Carla is actually sending some nubbins, says, I completely understand. Now I'm digging it out. It makes me show all. And now Carla is bragging about what she throws away. It's true. You know, now I love this. Beth, I am also a Beth. Did I not introduce myself? I, I can never remember. I usually just jump right in because I see a lot of familiar names. So my name is Beth. I hear you calling. Beth, uh, my coaching is called Destination Decluttered here on TikTok, on YouTube, DestinationDecluttered.com, Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that there. And I am a decluttering life coach. I do these TikTok things. I have a free mailing list, email mailing list, and I do paid one-on-one -on -one coaching with people from all over the country. So that's me in a nutshell. Look at me. I'm in a nutshell. Okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah. They don't have their, yep, yeah, University of Chicago. They don't have their own place, and we're at my mom's condo now after divorce. Okay. You know? Uh, I love it. Carla is coming in on fire. Yes, we can all do this. I promise if I can, you absolutely can too. Honestly, that's why I show up too. Carla, same thing. If I can do it and I grew up 
in a cluttered collector household. I am currently still digging out the, the, my mother out of the house that, you know, I grew up in because I didn't learn this, but now I did. I learned it in the last like 10 to 15 years and my life is so much better. I just want to share this with you. Okay. There we go. I love it. You shit girl. It says I, we did one round of that, but I'll keep going back with them. Yes. And it does take rounds. It's like, it's like, um, weeding your garden. You go back in and first you rake out all the oak leaves. And then after you do the oak leaves, it's like, oh, this looks better. Not perfect, not done. It looks better. Cool. Oh, but you know what I realize now? After it looks better, I appreciate what I did. Oh, but you know what? There's this other layer of stuff. Now I say I've got clover in there. Now I'm going to pull out my clover. Okay, now I'm going to, it's going to take a few. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a cycle. Nothing wrong with that. Yes, and we are breaking those historic chains of the people who raised us who couldn't deal with their clutter, we are learning how to do it so we don't do that to the younger generations. Okay? All right, Queen Vic. Queen Vic, I still have a pile of my 54-year-old daughter's stuff in my garage despite my coaching. Well, I was coaching, you know, so I would get curious. Why it's still there, how you feel about it being there, how she feels about it being there, you know? It's, it's, it's an interesting journey, you know? Yeah, there we go. I'm talking my daughter's stuff today. All right, Victoria, you rock, you rock. All right, Diana is asking for um, tips on decluttering clothes. Yes, wicked simple. Not easy, but simple. Keep the stuff you like that makes you feel good. Donate the rest of it. Boom, we're done. Isn't that so easy? <laughs> Some things are easy to say, but not as easy to do, but it's not as difficult. Okay, so decluttering clothes. I think I did a TikTok video about this recently because the, the, the times they are changing, the seasons must be the season of the witch. It is, it's cold, it's almost Halloween. This is Halloween, this is Halloween. It's almost Halloween. So this, wherever you live, it might organically be a time where you are no longer wearing your warm weather, your cold, your warm weather clothes, you're wearing your cold weather clothes. Notice the clothing that makes you feel lousy. The stuff that is too tight, that is itchy, that is not, what do I want to say? You know, it doesn't make you feel look good. It makes you look dumpy or whatever. Notice the stuff that doesn't make you feel good. Get it out of your life. If you have two outfits in your, in your life, you're all set. Now, obviously that feels like not a lot, but you know what's bugging you right now is having too much, okay? Is having too much. Um, categorizing. Categorizing. Chunking it down into categories. Don't do all your clothes at once. No. Get all of your t-shirts together, let's say. Now, t-shirts, no. We won't even do t-shirts because those can be sentimental. All of your pants. How's that? All your pants. All your slacks. <laughs> get get your slacks. Notice that's a, that is a subset of clothing. Pull out one and then literally you will probably know before you even try them on which ones are your favorites. You know that because you reach for them every day when you go to get dressed and you know the ones you do not reach for. Get curious about the stuff you don't reach for. Why aren't you reaching for it? Listen to yourself, people. Listen to yourself. You have the answers in you. This is what coaching does. I ask you a question and we pause. I often mute myself and you've got the answers in you, okay? And get curious about why you're keeping that. I know I have some clothing in this closet right here. I wear the same thing over and over again. I do wear other things. Do not get me wrong. Excuse me, I'm gonna cough. <coughs> I have a dress or two in this closet that I really like, that I hope fits my body. Have I tried it on recently? No, but the last time I tried it, it felt okay. Um, so it's never gonna be perfect. Many of us will have aspirational clothing, but how much of it do you need to remind you to do something? Okay, okay. Beth is even saying, the, the other Beth, all our, us Beths, oh, the other Beth says, I no longer need to keep things that don't fit. Yeah, and Oceanana says it so true. One man's junk is another man's treasure. The clothing that doesn't fit you now, you know there's somebody out there in the world who, who can fit into that and would benefit from your abundance. You are sharing your abundance. I have too many clothes. 
I share them with somebody else, then they have some and I feel better. Okay. Oh, funny. Uh, I am Vicki in Arizona and I think my daughter's stuff just keeps escaping our notice. Yeah, we get, we get clutter blindness. It's, it's a physical thing because our, our brain can only handle so much information. And if you keep on ignoring something and you don't deal with it, your brain will stop showing it to you. It will become, as the Artful Dodger would say, part of the furniture. Okay? Um, see, I love it. Carla Jane, I do the same thing. Carla's saying, I have, I have started putting things in the donate box if I try it on and it feels weird or off that day. Okay, so user 5470, very good point, and notice this, but what if I lose weight? Notice that phrase in your head causes you to feel like you want to hang on to it. Notice the fear behind that thought. My fear is if I give away those clothes, if I lose weight, I'm going to be naked. <laughs> or I, um, I'm going to have to spend money on them. Okay, now, you to 5470, I don't know your situation. If you are actively trying to lose weight, then keep them. Now, and I don't want people to say, but get real with yourself. Nobody wants to get real with themselves. They always want to. I, too, hope that my body is a different shape so I can fit into that one dress. How many of your small clothes do you really want to wear once you, if you lose the weight? You know, ask yourself these things. Yeah, uh-huh. Kara, you and, you and me, I love this. So Beth says, I found it easier. I love the word easy. I found it easier to donate items to a women's shelter. Yes, when you find a place where you know you have too much and somebody has nothing. My husband and I today, when we walked down to the post office, because this is one of the ways I force myself to get out of the house when it's cold, is I set myself, big surprise, I give a destination. Because if I just went out on some random walk, I would be heading home too sweet. But I said, you want to go down to the post office with me? I have to mail this thing. We got some roof work done. I had to mail the check. And then I said, hey, wait a minute. I know that we have some, some food in the cupboard that hasn't been opened, hasn't expired, and we're not eating it. Let's put together a little bag for the, um, there's a food pantry near us. So yes, when you realize that you have, you having too much, look at how lucky you are. Did I ever tell you how lucky you are to have too much stuff? You know what that means is that you get to share. And sharing, that, that act of sharing your stuff, wow. If that isn't a high vibe feeling, I don't know what is. That's what I'm doing right now. I am sharing with you my time, my energy, my jokes, my knowledge of pop culture, and my, my tips and processes for decluttering. Now, Kara, you and me both, maybe it is generational, maybe it's whatever. Kara says, the more I let go, the less I want. It's a lovely switch that went off in my head this year. Me too. This, this has happened to me about the last five or so years. I feel like I got not only everything I wanted, but then even more of it. And now what I'm doing is I'm curating my collections. I really am saying, do I need all of these? Do I need any of these? If I need or want any of these, do I need all of them? Or can I remove a few and only have like the best of the best? I did that with my Tiki mug collection a number of years ago. And I'm very happy with literally the two or three that I have left. Okay. I love it. User 1963 says, I've started selling on Poshmark and Depop. My daughter posts on Marketplace and we've made money. Rock on. That is yet another way that you can remove the things that you know that no longer work for you out of your home and somewhere else. Okay, there we go. Sherry Hooper says, my weight fluctuates between size six and eight, so I only keep those when going through my clothes. Yeah, yeah. I've learned to, I don't wear jeans anymore because I like to be comfortable. I'm so all about comfort or not being uncomfortable. Okay, so yeah, keep the clothes that make you feel good mentally and physically. The stuff that does not make you feel good. Notice I'm not even talking about clothes. I just say stuff in general. The stuff in your life that doesn't make you feel good is clutter. When you declutter the stuff that doesn't make you feel good, all you're left with is the stuff that feels good. Isn't that interesting? 
you know? Isn't that interesting? Notice, you get a pebble in your shoe, you can walk around with it, or you can stop, take off your shoe, remove the pebble, put your shoe back on and walk forward. You're gonna feel better. Now, I love this, because there are many ways you can get your stuff out of your house and feel good about it. Carla says, my son just dropped by and we gave him all kinds of things we were, th we, we were initially, I guess, throwing out today. His wife can use it in her classroom. You may think, oh, I just want to throw this stuff away, but maybe with a little bit of research, and I don't want to make it arduous because then people say, oh, I have to wait for the perfect place to donate it. We do not do perfect here. Look at me, how perfectly imperfect am I? You are perfectly imperfect yourself. Find an easy way, find a way. There is a way that you can release your items that no longer serve you that will make you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, strong silver soul sister. It's living from, a, from an abundance rather than fear and scarcity. Yeah, and I know because I've had that mindset, me too. Here's the really cool thing about all of us right here who struggle with clutter. Many things, many things are cool about us. We see value in things that we think other people don't. We see opportunity. Oh, I could make something with that. We are environmentally conscious. Don't throw that away. I could use that. We have a lot of good qualities in us and not just or and or but listen to me, I'm conjunction junction. And when we declutter ourselves, we delight and revel in how good it feels because we know the opposite. It's like I will never forget when my husband and I were first dating and I moved down to the beach to live near him in Delaware. I had a summer rental for the winter rent. You know what I mean? It was a summer house. I did a winter rental. It was propane. It was, and my, my heat ran out. I ran out of propane, propane and propane related products. It was so cold in that house for a couple of days and I could, didn't have money to put propane in the tank. So I was there, you know, building fires and stuff um, in the fireplace. When the heat came on, oh, I will never take for granted when my heat is on in my house because I know what it's like to be cold. I revel in it. I, I am grateful for it. You will feel good when you are decluttered, even more so than people just, just grew up being regular. You will revel in it. You will savor it. You will delight in it. You do that right now, even when you clean off one smidge of a table, you're like, damn, that looks good. And then you expand it and expand it in a little bit. Do it because it feels good. Not because you have to, because you want to, and you want to feel good. Mic drop, I don't know, get off my soapbox. <laughs> now, user 1963 says, I put books in little libraries and give trinkets, keychain, school stuff for trick or treaters. There you go, that's fun. I, I, I put books in little free libraries and I get books out of little free libraries. Notice that exchange, that flow, that connection, that sharing of what I have with you and what you have with me. It's a really cool feeling. It's not like I have it all and you have nothing. Mm. No. Who wants to be that person? Greedy, selfish. Uh. No. How about this? I got some. Want some of my fries? You know? Um, I love it. Lynn, I know Carla's done this. I've done it. I put my things out on the road and it gets picked up before I can change my mind. Yeah, me too. Get it out of there. Talk about easy, you know? Um, yeah, Clara, here's a fun thing. Clara is asking, how do I pick a spot to start? I feel like everywhere I look, there's stuff. This is cool. It doesn't really matter where you start. All that matters is that you do start. Okay doesn't matter. Pick something up that bugs you and do something about it. Now there's a strategy I can offer to you, which would be, there's a couple of things. You could start in one room and only work on that one room. If you have the focus, you can stick in one room. You will notice visually the difference more so than if you flit from flower to flower. Okay. Yeah, I think flit, somebody was using it. Um, or you can use one of these three categories. The first of the three categories of clutter or the levels of clutter, surface, stored, and sentimental. 
Now, surface clutter is a couple of things. Surface clutter is trash that goes in the trash can. Surface clutter is um, the stuff that you immediately know, no, I don't want that. That's the stuff that you easily, notice easy, I'm going to use that word all the time. Let's not make it into a drinking game. I will be drunk. Easily get rid of. No brainer. I want to donate that to something. You start a donation bag. Then there's surf stored clutter. You get your habits to clean out your surfaces. Then you go to your stored clutter. Now, here's a new thing. You may quickly realize that you have items on your surfaces because your storage is full. You're going to need to empty some of your storage if you want to put things away. And that's when you talk about categories and chunking things down. How do you pick a spot? Trust yourself, Clara, that anything you declutter that makes you feel, if there's something that makes you feel crappy right now, if you check, if you start there, you're going to feel better after you do it. Now, Daisy says, Clara, I like to pick a corner and make my way around. I have a client that does this. What was she calling it? Like the Mount Vernon method. You know, I have other people that that would drive them up the wall and down again. So then they just kind of putter around. Now, I try to keep it. You're going to get more bang for your buck when you focus on one area. I'm not going to lie to you. But if that activates your nervous system and makes you want to not do anything, you can also allow yourself to do something else. You know, the Lissardo is saying, I started with the top of the dresser in a room that was a disaster. Once I saw progress, I kept on. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, there you go. Not, it's, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, uh, yeah. Milena. I realized I don't hate laundry. I hate overloaded drawers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Notice, this is a really interesting thing about clothing and laundry. Laundry is not, what, the clothing that's in your laundry is not the stuff that you're donating. This is not the stuff you want. You know that because it's dirty enough that you washed it and it's dirty because it was on your body and you wore it on your body because it felt good. Now, there are some times, like I did this yesterday, I took out some laundry and I had worn a pair of pants on vacation that I was like, oh, those make me feel uncomfortable. So I knew after I washed them, they immediately went into a donation bag. As your laundry is in the washer or the dryer or maybe stacked up on top of it, before you take your clean clothing to where you put it away, look at your storage, look at your closet, look at your bureau. That's what we call them back in where I'm from. Your dresser, your chest of drawers, your shiffer robe, what have you. Look at what isn't in the laundry. But it's taking the space of the stuff that's actively in, in your cycle. What can you pull away? If you have 20, if you have 10 shirts in your laundry, could you do like a prison swap? Could you be like, okay, I'm going to hang this up, but I got to take 10 shirts out before I hang up 10 shirts. Okay. Now, sometimes we flit and sometimes we focus. Practicing, you flitters, I know you. I love you. You're my people. Practicing focusing. You don't have to focus for the rest of your life. Practicing shifting from focus to non-focus and non-focus to focus. Practice shifting. No all or nothing. No, like, you know, what, are they, oh, what do we call it? Damn it, now I lost my train of thought. Um, Hyper-focus or complete collapse. Try to avoid that as much as you can. Yeah, I've said it about the laundry because it's true. Everything I say on these TikTok lives, if you've followed me for any amount of time, and if you haven't, I might be a good idea for me to introduce myself. My name is Beth. I am a decluttering life coach. You find me here on TikTok um, at Destination Decluttered. Okay. I call it Destination Decluttered because it keeps me focused to be like, why am I doing this? Oh, because I want to go to there as, again, my second my second uh, Tina Fey reference of the day. You know? Um, yeah. Ruth says, I start in the kitchen, find something that belongs somewhere else, go take that in there, then take something in there, and then find something else that belongs somewhere else, and around, around I go. Yeah, see what happens when you flit around? You get a whole bunch of nothing done. You get some stuff done, but you don't see the, you don't see the, the good result of your energy like you would if you focused in one area. It reminds me of, do you guys remember in the Sunday, I almost said the Sunday Globe, you know, the, pa the, the Sunday paper of your choice, the family circus, the family circle, where it would be like, why is it taking Bobby so, no, Tommy, Timmy, why is it taking Timmy so long to get back from school? And they showed the little dotted line because he's all over the place. If you want to get somewhere quickly, you go from point A to point B. Practicing, if you are a flitter, there isn't anything wrong with that, but practicing focusing in certain areas gets you where you want to go to 
more quickly. Once you do that, and this is why a timer is so great. Time for timer. Time for timer. Put your timer on. Set it for 20 minutes and practice focusing. And then when the timer goes off, then you can flit. You know, I play a game sometimes that I even said this to my husband. Pretend there's like an invisible force field that goes down and you can't leave that room until the timer goes off. When the timer goes off, the invisible force field dissolves and then you can go in the other room. Practice focusing your energies and your you'll get better results. Okay? I love it. Michelle says, I've spent the last two days going through spare bedroom, donated three bags and thrown out one. Rock on. Good stuff. Notice there's no, it, it, none of us, you're never really, and not to say this like a fearful thing, you're never really ever 100% done. But man, are you so much better all the time. Like to me, I'm decluttering. My decluttering is literally down to like this very small pile of paperwork that I'm going to work on when I do this client only um, uh, decluttering party because we had one for just the people on my mailing list last weekend. It was so fun. I want to do one just for my paying clients. I have stuff I'm going to work on. I get client clutter. I'm a professional declutterer and I too have clutter because clutter is organic. It is always going to happen. There are going to be things in your life that you have that you use for a while and then you don't. There are going to be things that you wore for a while and maybe you grew out of them. There are going to be foods that you bought too many of because they were on sale and now you're really sick of garbanzo beans and so you donate them. Okay, so it is a journey. It is a process. But every time you get rid of something that doesn't, isn't being used or, you know, makes you feel bad, you're going to feel good. So notice these things. Uh-huh. Oh, that's very cool. So everybody, um, Carla Jane, Carla is one, it's so farty because I call it Carla. Carla Jane is one of my one-on-one -on -one clients. We are having a great time. This is the fun thing about coaching. When we coach, I coach one-on-one -on -one through Zoom um, online. I never go to anybody's house except for my mother's. She's different. I am in Pennsylvania. Carla is in Alabama. We've never met kind of in person, but Carla is saying, if you want to know about the one-on-one -on -one experience, please message me. I would love to share. Okay, so I'm just offering that up. Carla's offering that because she and I are having a great time. And it is infectious in a good way. The energy, when you hear, when you see somebody and you hear the examples of how they're changing their lives but getting rid of clutter, it keeps me doing what I'm doing. It keeps me spending time on this side of TikTok as opposed to scrolling, you know? And I love this. New Year 1963, so true. Hurricane Milton made me start focusing on what I wanted to save at all costs, at all costs, and what I didn't want to. Yeah, where is it? I had written down something like that. Oh, I'll see if I can find it for a future one. I really got, I, I was really serious about that too. Oh, I forget where I put it. I'm just kind of putting myself on the spot. It's around here somewhere, which is my family motto, I swear to God, family I grew up with. So many people lost so much stuff Yet when you're in those crisis situations, yeah, it sucks to lose your stuff. I would be bummed if our house got you know, hit by a tornado. But if I had my health and I had my husband and maybe just a handful of really important things to me and defining what's really important, anything else could be replaced. You know, anything else can be replaced. Yes, and take a video of your house. Notice you can take pictures right now. Like for example, if like this house blew up, I would like to have a picture of all these random little inspirational quotes I have. Don't quit your daydreams, go confidently in the direction of your dreams, change the world, all this kind of stuff. I would love a picture of this, but that could be just as fine. Other things I'd be a little bit more bummed if it happened. So much of clutter is just stuff you don't even want anyway, you know? Yeah. And yeah, Queen Victoria says the mind shift, right? Yeah, it's mind blowing. And, and Victoria and, and, and Carla, you know that we're doing this thing on Wednesday, on Saturday, noontime Eastern. If you can make it, you know, then you can meet each other, you know? Yes. And better now than when it's wet. Yeah. As soon as your stuff gets broken or wet or moldy or gross, tattered or dingy or dusty, you know, it might be good for, um, for, uh, Oscar the Grouch, but you don't want to touch that stuff when it gets all musty and, and dried out or, ugh, you know? Yeah, and it's definitely a good place to donate our things to. Um, yeah, notice, sharing your abundance. Oh, cool, Victoria, I look forward to seeing you. Very cool. Yes, I know, Victoria, Victoria. Very cool. Yes, 
And I love it. It's me, Deb. This is one of the things we do in my coaching. I take pictures of my clutter and I take pictures of my after. It's like my own personal HGTV show. Sometimes it, I amaze myself. Yeah, I was saying this. A client said this to me recently. She said, I was scrolling through my pictures and I came across the set of pictures that I sent to you when we very first started coaching. And she says, oh my gosh, I, I already forgot how bad it was at the beginning. So I am even more amazed at the progress I have. I love trash. Exactly. I love it when people pick up my my pop culture references. Very cool. I need to do this, frankly, and I said this to my husband when we were on our walk this morning. I said, I really need to go back and look at the pictures that I took in the fall of 2021 when my mother, my aging mother, well, we're all aging, agreed that she could use some help with her clutter. I had been offering literally all my life it took her to be 80 years old where she was like, well, you know, I probably could use some help. So I came and I took pictures beforehand because I was like, damn, I need to document this. The crazy thing is, is now she really hasn't maybe changed her habits a wicked lot, but because it's neater, it tends to be staying a little bit neater. And we got somebody to come in like twice a month and to be the cleaning lady type of thing. So she gets it in order more often than not. If you take pictures right now, and you make changes, even if it's by the end of the day, your rooms will look different and they will look better. Okay? Now, STARS is asking about the most difficult part of decluttering. So let's back it up. STARS is saying, what about vintage items from family? That is sentimental items. Those are the things that touch your heart. I want to just remind you, STARS, we will get to that, but let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. Start with your surface clutter. Because if you can't deal with your surface clutter or your stored clutter, your sentimental clutter is going to be even more difficult to, to deal with. What I want you to do, much like if I was like your, um, your personal trainer at the YMCA, YMCA, I would say start with the light weights. Start small. Practice making decisions about what you want and what you don't want with the easy things on the surface. That will build your muscle, okay? You will get used to making decisions about what you consciously want in your life and what you don't. As you do that, you will get stronger in this. Then you go to your surf stored clutter and you open up a door or a drawer and you say, do I really need all of these um, you know, water bottles? I literally was standing on a kitchen chair today looking up into the top cap cupboard because I was looking for to see if we had an extra salt shaker but I had decluttered and we didn't, no big deal. Um, and I even was like, do we really need all these? And then if the answer is yes, okay, then where's a good place to store them? But if not, how can I donate them? Okay. And notice vintage items from family. So we went from surface to stored. Now we're at sentimental. Sentimental, notice where my heart is. <laughs> I gave it away. Notice where my hand is. My hand is on my heart. Okay. And I say this because... Vintage items from family can cause you to feel feelings. Vintage items from your family have stories attached to them. It's not just a mug. It's a mug that grandpa drank from. It's not just an egg beater. It's an egg beater that Pete Carney's grandmother had. And now I never knew Pete's grandmother, but I knew Pete. And now Pete died a couple months ago. Sentimental things take time. They take energy. You can go through them. But when you have practiced deciding what you want, and it's a question you ask yourself every day, the answer gets stronger and clearer, and you're more easily able to feel in your body what you want of those vintage items from family, if anything, and which ones can you release. And family items, you can ask, does anybody else in the family want this? Notice, they may say, no, I don't want it. They have allowed themselves to say, no, I don't want it. You are also allowed to say, I don't want it either. Do not be guilted into saving something that you don't want. If you don't want it, I bet there's somebody else out there who does. Okay, stars? So notice, surface, stored, sentimental. Get yourself strong and it will be easier to go through the vintage items. As I said earlier, I did this. If you're watching, if you're tuning in late, you can watch the, re the rerun of this, the recording of this on um, Destination Decluttered on YouTube. 
Earlier, I was talking about my husband saving these two little mugs that were his mom's for years. His mom died in 2006. We've had them in our house ever since then. They've been in our cupboard. They were in a box for a while, and then we put them in the cupboard because he said, I'm going to use those. And I said, hey, why don't you use them this week? He tried them out. He didn't like them. And now they are now about to go back into, he's okay with letting them go. So this is a journey. This is a process. You're not going to get, you're going to do it. You're going to do it up to the fact that, you know, it's a journey. Let's just say that. Um, here we go. Carla Jane says, how do I chat with you, Carla? You're one of best, best, best advocates. Okay. Um, all right. Robin says, had, I'm trying to follow it up. Um, had a bad leak in a bathroom yesterday. Oh, hopefully you're not in your underpants. Um, even after decluttering, the amount of garbage was still too much. Yes. Water. Yeah. It helps things. Yes. Um, <laughs> that's true. The YMCA song. Luckily, I didn't have that one up with the volume up. Yeah. Um, okay. M. No one wants grandma's china and I live in a tiny space. What do I do? Notice when you think nobody wants it, you're hanging on to it yourself. I will tell you, yes, many people, let's reframe this. Many people don't want the china anymore. It's true. But there are people who do. If that wasn't the case, replacements limited would not exist. So there may be somebody who wants it. Does somebody in your family want it? Maybe, maybe not. Does somebody at replacements, you know, it depends on what your pattern is. I got to look up my grandmother's pattern, but if I didn't want it, we would probably sell it or give it away or donate it. Or, you know, I actually gave a piece to a friend once who was making a mosaic, you know, it's okay for you to not want it either. If nobody else wants it, you don't have to want it either. You can donate it. You can sell it. You can give it to somebody to smash if they're mad. There's many things you can do with it. I would get curious to see what China, I used to, I used to work, it's so funny, my grandmother's China, the only reason she has China and silver, because we had no money, is because she worked for a China and silver importer. And so she, I know she got like the, <laughs> she got the employee discount, like I got the, the employee discount decades later at Pier 1 Imports, okay? So just because somebody, if nobody else, it's okay for you to not want it, okay? Um, I love it. Uh, somebody got the, the Sesame Street thing, yay. Very cool. I'm the last one that who remembers her. Okay, but M, notice, you remember her in your brain, your head, and your heart. You don't need those dishes to remind yourself of your grandmother. Right? Maybe you save one dish. Maybe you save a saucer and you put a candle on it. You know, do you need all of the dishes to remind yourself of your grandmother? If you didn't have the dishes, would you forget her? No, just something to think about it. Yeah, perhaps an artist who makes mosaics would take it. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, it really, there, there are many things you can do, but notice when you tell yourself something declaratively negative, it just shuts down your brain from thinking that there's an alternative out there. I listen to alternative music all my life. I am the OG, Gen X, punk rock, new wave, you know, alt country person. I know that there's other perspectives out there. But if you tell yourself no, it ends the sentence. How about what if? What if there's somebody out there who is dying to complete their collection of China because they're one of those people? Now, maybe Carla can speak about this better than I can, but I've seen that like some women in the South like that kind of genteel thing where they do the China and stuff like that. I like trash. No, I like um, more modern stuff. You know? Yes. Yes, one set. I have that. My husband and I have one dish, like two dinner plates for my grandmother's china. Now my mother still has the whole set. It's in her china. It's in the corner cupboard in the in the lit dining room. Um, because if I took it all now, A, I don't need it now. And then her corner cupboard would look empty. But yeah, maybe when it comes time to empty her corner cupboard, maybe I will only save a bit of it. I don't need a bullion set. Literally, she's got some bullion uh cups they're like a they're like a teacup with another handle on the other side yeah take pictures of photos of the dishes and make an album i used to take pictures of my displays all the time at pier one filings um Mikasa. take a picture and leave it you don't even need to make an album keep it on your phone you know there we go um yeah there we go okay julie rose says great way of putting it i have a lot of family antiques that no one else may appreciate but they also might appreciate it. I would always, this is one thing I will share. 
especially with family items. You don't know what people's stories are behind by family stuff. So before you do anything with a family item of a true, like it wasn't yours, but it was like your grandmother's, it can never hurt to just get the word, do anything with a family item of a true, like it wasn't yours, but it was like your grandmother's. It can never hurt to just get the word out to say, hey, I don't want grandma's china. Do you want any, does anybody here want Grammy's china? Or even just a piece of it. Offer it up to the family first before you do anything else. If the answer comes back no, that's cool. That's good information. It's better to give people the opportunity to say no than to do something and then somebody says, oh man, I would have loved to have that. Okay, get the word out, you know? Yeah, Carla is even offering, even if you can't or don't want to get rid of something today, you may be okay next week to do it. Yeah, sometimes you just get sick of moving something around and then it just doesn't fit and you're like, you know what? I'm just gonna let it go. Yeah, there we go, M. I try to remind myself that she, my mom, wouldn't hold it against me. No, your mom wants you to be happy. I want you to be happy. You know, notice it's my guilt. It doesn't have to be your guilt. You can also give away the guilt. You can say, no, thank you, guilt. I'm gonna stop feeling guilty and I'm gonna start feeling good, you know? Robin, I didn't record the Zoom from the weekend, no. So if anybody's curious about what we're talking about, I decided, so for quite a while now, I have done a free monthly Zoom for the people on my mailing list. Um, that was cool. It got a li little bit, the last one we did was kind of boring. It was fine, but it wasn't any kind of pizzazz. So I decided to do what I called a declutter party. All of us on the mailing list, whoever wanted to show up, showed up at a certain time. I sent out a Zoom link. And for two hours, for an hour and a half of decluttering and then an hour, a half an hour for like gabbing and socializing um, and, you know, talking about clutter, we got on Zoom and we decluttered. Now, the magic of doing that is kind of lost in recording. I'm going to be doing it again in November. I haven't picked the date or time, but I will be. So when you find that out, um, when you find that out, you can join up, but you can do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You can still, you know, do it. Like I'll, I'll share with the, yeah, I'm doing it with clients, paying clients this week. Um, but what, what I did, Robin, it was like, pick a day of the week and a time of day that you're going to do it and then keep your promise to yourself. This Saturday, show up and do some decluttering at your house at 12 noon Eastern until 1.30 Eastern. We're doing it at the same time. You know that other people will be decluttering with you. Okay. Now, here's a funny thing. Carla says, because she's from the South, we are all about the China and patterns. You must register for your pattern when you married. Yeah, I remember doing that back in the day. But then I was like, I don't even want these dishes. So there are people out there who might want your grandma's China. You know, you never know who else is doing that. You know? Okay, so Robin, you were there. Okay, it was just so great. Yeah, but, but notice we want to somehow hold on to that. Hold on to it inside. You know you feel it, you know? Yeah, you know that you feel it. So feel that good feeling right now. You don't need the recording to remind you of how good it felt, you know? Okay, um, so if you're on the mailing list, I sent out the Zoom link at the beginning of the month and then right at the week before, like sometime last week. How do you join? Oh, Am, I'm sorry, I totally forgot. DestinationDeclutter.com is my website. And I'm glad you mentioned that because I looked and I have like a minute to go hear them signing off. And I love it. User 1963 says, go to the Destination Decluttered bio and there's a link that you can sign up. But everybody, just so you know, Destination Decluttered, that's me. Hi, I love it because I love to travel. Beth, Destination Decluttered, decluttering life coach. If you're interested in pretty much anything I do, Sign up for the mailing list because the mailing list people also know if I'm going to be showing up tomorrow for a TikTok live or not. I might be. Um, DestinationDeclutter.com slash join. Sign up for the mailing list. It's free. If you want me to be your one-on-one -on -one coach, you can find out about that and sign up for a consultation as well. Um, and notice, if you forgot it was last Sunday, how can, how what's a good way for you to remember things next time? You know? Um, I love it. Uh, Cree got a juice that says, I've been decluttering my home. It's cleaner. I'm free a little bit. I put on the curb for others to take. Yes. Sharing your abundance, people. Think of it. Walk around your house and say, I'm not cluttered. I'm abundant. And you know what I am also? I am generous. I am generous with the stuff that I don't want because if I don't want it, somebody else might. 
you know? So it has hit the two o'clock top of the hour mark right here on the Eastern Seaboard. My name is Beth, Destination Decluttered. I'm gonna sign off for now because I've got stuff to do to do decluttering and living a life I love. I hope you do too. Um, if you like what you heard today and you want more of this, follow me here on TikTok. I love seeing my following numbers grow. If you don't want to know when I'm showing up on TikTok to do a TikTok Live, hop on my mailing list, DestinationDeclutter.com. Immediately there, you get access to the schedule of me doing my TikTok Lives, and you'll be invited to these declutter parties that I have at least once a month, okay? If you want to be my client, that's also where you can find out information about that, sign up for a consultation, and I do a lot more cool things for my clients, okay? All right, friends. Awesome to see you. So glad, Carla and Louise, you got to be connected. Carla, you rock. You all rock. You're doing a great job with what you're doing. Keep on doing what you know how to do, and don't be afraid to learn a new skill called decluttering. All right? I'll see you. Bye.